Uh, hello and welcome to the webinar Press Fit Elopin Technology. How to develop the new co the mobile connectors, uh, excuse me, the complex connectors for the new mobility. Today's webinar is organized by CGR. CGR specializes um, in co-engineering and serial production of mechanical and mechatronic components uh, for the automotive and aerospace industry. The company operates factory manufacturing sites in eight countries, as you can see in the presentation here. Very sorry. Global presence, local production. Uh, and CGR has a long term experience in creating technical solutions involving press fit Elopin connections. Uh, today with us, uh, Dr. Philip Eigen, CEO of CGR Germany. Uh, Philip has over 25 years experience in molding and stamping and helps clients industrialize connective applications and mechatronic components. Uh, Dr. Eigen, hello, Dr. Eigen. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Dick Trigon will present uh, Presfit Elipin technology, its functional and economical advantages, and will demonstrate how to best use this innovative technology and how to co-engineer efficient solutions for your products with CGR. Later on, we'll be joined by Mr. Lucas Storm. Mr. Storm is a purchasing manager at Malix, a service provider for electronics manufacturing with worldwide operations. Mr. Storm will talk about Malik's experience in industrializing and deployment technology in cooperation with CGR. Uh, hello, Dr. Stor uh, hello, Mr. Storm. Hello, uh, good morning. Thank you for, for, joining, for joining us today. Uh, please note that you are uh, welcome to send us your questions uh, throughout the, ch the webinar, the webinar chat, uh, the window on your right. Uh, we'll address as many questions as possible uh, during our uh, questions and answer session uh, in the end of the webinar. Thank you. Uh, and now we can pass to the first part of our webinar. Press fit Elipin and its benefits. Uh, Dr. Eigen, um, can you explain what is press fit Elipin technology? Yes, of course. Uh, before I start with this, uh, thank you everybody for joining. I appreciate very much that so many of our customers are joined uh, at a time where usually there's a lot of other things to do. And I also welcome uh, all my colleagues from CGR. So a lot of them uh, know about the press fit. Uh, some of them, uh, for example, my colleagues in Mexico who got up early uh, are also using it. So thank you everybody for joining. Uh, before we talk um, about the yellow pin, it's maybe very important to mention um, that electronics is gaining more and more importance in all areas of mobility. Um, only one example, uh, if we look at the car the w vehicles, which is very important for the CGR group, we can see that, um, well, electronics in 2030 will uh, make around 50% of the value of the car. And if we look at electronics and if we look um, at the innovations done in electronics, uh, we can say that generally they are found on the PCB. Uh, the PCB is this little thing you will see when you open up a mobile a computer or uh, as i said electronics in the car pcb is an abbreviation for printed circuit board uh, and the big problem um, is to do the connect to do the connection between the micro electronic on the pcb and the macro electronic environment of the car and um, there with the elo pin uh, we will explain later how how this is uh, this is done uh, we offer um, a solution uh, which is reliable and efficient to connect the PCBs to its environment. So, as we said, connect microelectronics with macroelectronics. Okay, so what is this ELO pin? Uh, it's basically a stamping part made of bronze, uh, galvanically plated with tin and nickel, um, and we do that to ensure a good connection to the PCB. Um, and um, usually it's not one uh, a single elo pin used to do the connection 
but we were using multiple press fits, ELO pins to make uh, connections between PCB and the macro electronics of the car or other and, devices. And Dr. Eigen, what kind of press fits does CGR propose and what's the difference of the ELO pin from others, other press fits? Okay, so I mean, press fit is nothing new. It's a, it's an um, existing uh, technology, uh, and press fit is the general term for a, a solderless connection of PCBs, and we use one uh, special shape, one special design, which is called um, Elo pin, uh, because we think um, it's um, the most advanced and uh, most performant uh, uh, press fit connection. Therefore, we chose the Elo pin. And we were one of the first companies, uh, CGR, to uh, offer this pin. And uh, we have been working with this technology for 14 years and never had bad, bad experience. Uh, so we think we are having a good um, uh, good technology to offer. Um, coming back to the ELO pin itself, um, it's uh, uh, it's an elastic needle eye shape. As I said, we stamp it on the, uh, on the copper strip. And um, we can press it in uh, the contact area of the PCB. And uh, with this way, you have an elastic um, a deformation on the pin. It's a bit elastic and also plastic. Um, and we can therefore ensure tight and gas proof and uh, um, resistant connection even, and this um, occurs more and more, we will see later where we find the PCBs connected by our ELO pin uh, on the car, for example. Uh, you will find it in environments which are uh, have dramatic temperature changes, uh, vibrations, um, and uh, this is typical for the vehicles. Um, and we offer a connection which can uh, be all that. And um, okay, um, what is uh, the ELO pin about? It's a, actually it's a bit like soldering, uh, um, uh, like a soldering connection, but without soldering. So we created a 3D shape by stamping, as I already said, on the outside of the pin. Uh, this is tin coated, and if we press it in, um, uh, in the hole, that's what we see here on the uh, pictures. Uh, on the right, you see, of course, uh, um, big uh, microscopic photos of a pressed fit, a pressed in a press fit, um, elo pin, and um, we create a, a very high contact surface between the PCB hole. Um, and the pin, and this uh, surface is higher than with a normal soldering contact. Uh, and on the one hand, the ELO pin is precise, on the other hand, it's uh, elastic, as I said, so uh, we can ensure that between the tin, which is applied on the uh, hole of the PCB, and the tin on the uh, ELO pin, we form so-called uh, tin pockets, and these tin pockets are accumulations of tin, uh, and uh, we can say this is a bit like the soldering connection, but without thermal effort. And uh, in this connection, there are no uh, spares or empty spaces. Uh, the contact force um, is uh, is high, uh, and the ELO pin will also compensate the tolerances of the PCB uh, holes, um, and um, so the flexibility is more higher than the soldering pin. To have an idea of this pin, we, we talked about it very theoretical uh, until now. Um, maybe you look at the presentation. Uh, if you look at the close-up, you can see um, the uh, hole on the PCB. And this hole has a diameter of one millimeter. Uh, and um, you can see the pressed in ELO pin. And if we go to the right, uh, on the where you use written microscope, you can see a macro of this uh, hole. And what we see is uh, the pin in the middle, so two. Uh, and number one is the uh, hole itself uh, covered with tin, which is uh, the marked with the number three. So there's a little tin layer on uh, the inside of the PCB hole. And what you see, if you look at four and five, you see this accumulations of tin between the ELO pin uh, and uh, the uh, hole in the PCB. Um, and uh, as I said, this connection is gas proof. Uh, it's tight and it's uh, um, uh, very, uh, uh, very reliable and has a low um, resistance, which is, of course, important for the um, electric uh, signals or power going over this pin. This already, uh, this are, these are the obvious advantages since it's a gas proof connection, it's resistant to thermal and mechanical stress. And what are other advantages of uh, the ELOPIN technology in terms of productivity and quality, Dr. Eigen? 
Okay. So you, I hope you see that I'm very enthusiastic about this little pin. Uh, so again, um, you already mentioned it, gas proof connection, resistant to term thermal and mechanical stress. Um, and at the same time, it does not affect the PCB at all uh, because we just press it in um, and uh, we will not apply uh, any heat to the PCB like we have to do uh, when we do a solar connection. Um, heat, of course, can always do harm to the PCB. Um, when you solder the PCB, it means at the end um, applying heat to it and um, you may need uh, heat resistant uh, components, uh, which is not necessary with the ELO pin. Uh, and soldering is also always a delicate process um, because um, you usually have to test the soldering connection um, at the end and the ELO pin process is much easier. You receive the pin from us, uh, maybe even already in a connector shape uh, like you see here. Um, you press in the PCB uh, and the connection is there. So no soldering process. Uh, to summarize once again, um, with ELO pin you don't need heat resistant components soldering equipment which is relatively expensive and you don't need an end-of-line testing uh, for the soldering proce process itself. Um, what is also important is that we guarantee with our ELOPIN the insertion force um, so um, it will be a very guided and stable process um, um, and you uh, can uh, um, by pressing in control force and traveling uh, and then you will have your tin pockets and have a very, very reliable uh, um, connection with the same or even higher quality than the soldering. And how do you guarantee it? Is there some kind of international industrial standards for this technology? Well, um, the um, guarantee is let uh, let uh, let's say it like this is made uh, by uh, by um, uh, tests conducted with our elo pins. Uh, so before an elo pin is um, uh, put on the market, it will be extensively tested uh, in the laboratory. Uh, there are special um, uh, norms uh, describing uh, um, the, the tests to have a, a, a proven connection. Um, temperature changes, humidity, uh, um, uh, vibration tests uh, and um, due to the fact that we do a lot of metrology in the process we can guarantee uh, that our uh, ELO pin will uh, stick to this uh, laboratory results all the time. So what we do here really is not only guaranteeing a dimension uh, or using the right material, we guarantee the function. And this function is a good connection even in harsh environments. Thank you, Dr. Reigen. And what are economical advantages of the Elopin technology implementation? Well, uh, f uh, first of all, um, it's, um, um, I have to say it, maybe the pin is even a bit more expensive than a normal soldering pin, but, um, um, and this is due to the high uh, alloy copper we use, but this is only uh, maybe a joke. Uh, the initial in investment uh, cost for setting up a press fit ELO pin connection is lower because, as I said, we don't need any soldering devices at all. Um, we can press in the uh, ELO pin with a simple device and we're only monitoring uh, travel uh, and, uh, um, let's say, force, insertion force. Um, this also leads to a reduction of cycle time, uh, which is uh, the time required to, let's say, finish or uh, connect each product. Um, and the total cost of the assembly at the end is lower. Um, and uh, the material costs, um, if we are talking about housings, which are a lot of time used not only to connect the PCB, but also to protect it, um, we can use uh, standard plastic material because it does not have to be uh, heat resistant uh, as it would have been uh, when we have to solder. Uh, solder or heat resistant plastic is much more expensive. Um, but I think the main advantage, and this is also an, uh, at the end an economical advantage, is um, that we can create connection solutions which were impossible before. Just imagine uh, a housing uh, uh, where we can press in uh, the PCB, um, as I said, just by pressing it, and we don't have to solder um, um, because usually, if you uh, use a soldering wake, 
uh, on, uh, um, uh, let's say, a heat uh, treatment to the PCB to make the soldering. Um, and then um, a lot of times you could not use the plastic housing, for example. So um, uh, to summarize, uh, there are cost advantages regarding the equipment you need. Um, but uh, more biggest advantages is new shapes, uh, not possible before. And um, uh, of course, um, the fact that you that you don't uh, uh, you have to use a heat resistant uh, um, material or parts. Thank you, Dr. Eigen, for this very clear explanation. And uh, we have explored the uh, different advantages presented by this technology. Uh, and uh, when it comes to its implementation, how does CGR accompany its clients in the industrialization process? Okay, I mean, first of all, it's uh, very important to mention that CGR is a um, company always driven by the customer needs. Uh, and um, so I think our biggest uh, advantage is that we can adapt to the customer needs. And they are, of course, very different because our customers are very different. Uh, and so there is no stereotypical uh, process of co-engineering. Um, because we have to find out first what are the needs, what is the um, base of knowledge the customers have for this connection or for their part. But um, what we can say is um, one of our biggest assets is that we can optimize the whole stamping part uh, which is connected and attached to the uh, to the yellow pin. Um, that's for us the first step. So we talked about the yellow pin all the time, but this is only the side of the connector for the PCB. Of course, there's another side, so this is important as well. So there we can help with our know-how regarding stamping. Um, and um, of course, we can help our customers to co-engineer uh, the whole connector. Um, it's usually a, a device, like we also can see here on the, uh, on the presentation, uh, made of several ELO pins uh, and one plastic, uh, uh, one plastic corpus, uh, which is usually done by overmolding. And we can form complete PCB housings. So um, we offer our customer in the co-engineering process um, to find uh, the best uh, way um, to protect and connect uh, his PCB uh, to the, as we said, macroelectronic world. And what does this concept of co-engineering actually mean? What are the steps uh, of the process? Well, I said uh, it's um, not stereotypical, but the main elements are usually that uh, the customer comes uh, with the first layout of his PCB, uh, the main electrical uh, or electronical parameters, and the idea um, if he only wants to connect it with a pin or if he needs a whole connector or housing. Uh, and um, what we do at the first step then is propose uh, f electrical feasibility study of uh, the first drawing we, uh, we received. Um, and um, what we find out there is, um, is it workable with a ELO pin uh, uh, technology or not? And uh, the next step is um, choosing the right ELO pin for the product. Uh, this choice depends on the working and surrounding temperature of the pin uh, on the one hand. So it's uh, usually a question which uh, kind of bronze we use. Is it a standard bronze uh, for temperatures around 100 degrees? Or do we need a high oil or bronze uh, for temperatures of 150 degrees or even higher? Um, then uh, um, uh, we choose the ELO pin itself, which is um, depending on the uh, packaging size on the board, but also on the um, uh, signal strength, which has to be transmitted. And um, then we start to redesign the initial layout of the stamping part, um, maybe even the whole connector or housing. Uh, and promote, propose a cost-optimized and functionally stable solution. Um, and at the end of the process, uh, we hope also to be able uh, to offer serial parts um, uh, and, of course, provide them uh, with the necessary tools and automations uh, to, to form them. So um, what we want for the customer is a um, high-quality, uh, low-cost, um, and a very stable process uh, when we hopefully can do the serial production for him. What we can, of course, uh, um, also do, and which is an important part of the co-engineering process as well, is, um, uh, is uh, the prototyping, because um, um, there's a lot of simulation possible on uh, computers, but what you, uh, what you need um, 
is uh, at the end a prototype um, uh, of the whole connection system to be sure that this is the best solution. And this um, can we, uh, um, uh, this we can provide as well. Uh, and of course, there are several changes after you receive uh, the prototype. So this is also worked on together with the customer. And um, if this co-engineering phase is finished, uh, we can be sure, and more important, uh, the customer also can be sure um, that we uh, will be able uh, to proceed and to deliver 100% uh, tested and uh, good serial parts. This is what the uh, co-engineering process is all about, to uh, get the best possible solution for our customer. Thank you, Philip. And are there, and what are this, the limitations for the Lapin technology that can be encountered in the automotive, automotive industry? Uh, to be honest, and this is an important question because uh, we, are, we are always open with our customers and we are not selling uh, uh, um, unicorns, but we are selling good uh, solutions. So, uh, um, But uh, we have to say the limitations of the ELO pins are uh, a few. Uh, first of all, and this is important for the electronic specialists maybe attending, um, we cannot go below a packaging size of 1.4 millimeter. This is a bit depending on the size of the smallest ELO pin. Um, and um, uh, we have to say the SMT technology, surface-mounted technology, can go down to uh, 0 0.75 um, millimeters between two contacts uh, with different signals. We have to stick to 1.4 millimeters. And um, we can also use the ELO pin to stack PCBs, to, to combine two PCBs. Uh, we have a, can, can form uh, contacts with uh, one PCB on the one uh, ELO pin uh, on side, on the other side we also have an ELO pin then, and we can have the second PCB, but we cannot uh, stack uh, 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 more than two. So three would be not possible with the ELO pin. And um, of course, to, as I said in the beginning, we are ensuring uh, not only the dimensions of the press fit or ELO pin, but we are ensuring the function. So uh, we uh, tested it extensively. The different sizes have been all tested in the laboratory. So theoretically speaking, we have the limits of uh, uh, the values. You can see it here on the screen, um, tested uh, in the laboratory. But um, uh, these limits are given by an industrial standard, uh, concern forces, currents, temperatures, um, and um, to guarantee the function, everything needs to be in range uh, at our customer's uh, application. But of course, uh, we also have um, exceptions where we, where, but then it means uh, maybe further testing to, uh, uh, to ensure that um, special uh, surface treatment the customer wants or special uh, maybe higher temperature uh, will work as well uh, and of course um, extensive testing means uh, more costs but i would not say uh, that's a limit but it's very important uh, to know Thank and you, um, well this this table here is a good um, a good orientation also uh, for our customers uh, to see if they have some uh, electric electronic knowledge, uh, what uh, what they can use our pin for. Thank you. Um, thank you for explaining the nature of the Elo pin technology and its advantages. Uh, and now we will pass to the third part of our webinar, uh, where we'll be joined by Mr. Lucas Storm, who is already here with us, obviously, uh, who is Malex Purchasing Manager, uh, and. Mr. Lucas Storm will present the case study of the Elopin technology implementation in cooperation with CGR. Uh, Melex is an Austrian electronics manufacturing service provider. It provides a wide range of products and solutions for the automotive, lightning and white goods sectors and manufactures electronic assemblies and integrated solutions, including equipment assembly for the industrial sector, such as escalator controls, or energy efficient heating systems. Lucas? Okay, thank you, Anastasia. Thank you. With us. Thank you. For this uh, introduction, uh, I would like to give you a brief overview of uh, Melex, and then we are going to go directly into the case study. So, 
we at Melex, we have uh, in total roughly about 1,500 people or employees uh, working for Melex uh, globally. And from this 1,500 people, we have 100 or currently a bit more uh, engineers, R&D engineers, which shows uh, what our main competence is. So we make electronics smart. Um, and therefore, we had a, have a lot of uh, specific knowledge in the fields of electronics. Uh, we have four business segments and are privately owned uh, and a sales of 262 million euros. Um, for our global footprint, we have a standardized like automotives, uh, like it is standard in, in the automotive uh, industry. We follow our customers. Therefore, we have an engineering plant in the US, a production plant in Me Mexico, in Querétaro. And in Austria, we have uh, three plants or three uh, yeah, plants, like uh, one in Vienna, one close to Vienna, and the other one in, in Upper Austria. And near to the Austrian border, we have our uh, Hungarian plants. So in Europe, we have four different plants and one in China in Bushi. Thank you, Lucas. Uh, and today our case study is uh, Melex Gen 6 ECU congenite with CGR. Uh, Lucas, can you talk to us about the main challenges encountered during the co-engineering process uh, regarding the Gen 6 housing? So generally, maybe also here a short uh, brief overview of the project. So um, before you can have a Gen 6, you need to have a Gen 5. Uh, and you see above our Gen 5 housing. Uh, compared to the Gen 6 housing, it is uh, mounted uh, with screws uh, on the car. So what we are were asked for our Gen 6 housing is to get uh, smaller in size. So it needs to be directly implemented um into our customer uh, customers pro product so therefore we had to also develop electronics which uh, was able to deal with the um the requirements of the customer like uh, the functioning of the part as well as also deal with tight tolerances so this enables a direct implementation into our customers product so previous, the Gen 5 housing or the Gen 5 was uh, only used for uh, all real drives um, for, uh, in example, uh, drive line uh, connection couplings. But the new one is not just smaller, it's also smarter. So we use that or our customer used that, in example, for electro-hydraulic couplings or uh, for Excel disconnect modules. But uh, getting that, uh, that Complete ECU that small um, has some some difficulties. So um, for the project, for our lead project, uh, we had a, a, a production volume of around 600 pieces, 600,000 pieces per year. And uh, for the development, we had to consider several things like the environmental that uh, part is exposed. So it's under the car. It's really one of the toughest uh, areas where you can put a, a electronic component on a car so there's a lot of humidity oil temperatures from uh, like thinking about winter it's cold and then you start the car drive a bit and it gets warm so you have high temperatures low temperatures changes uh, it's exposed to salt and uh, yeah of course near the wheels so a lot of dirt so for this project we also had a time plan uh, beginning in the, at the end of 2017 and then planned SOP in February 2020. And as we can see here, um, we um, had a housing that needed to be uh, totally integrated in our customer uh, product. And therefore we designed uh, a round shape. But uh, the problem is that we have uh, broad knowledge in the electronic field but not that broad in the design to produce um, design to manufacture so that means we need uh, partners experts to support us during that uh, development phase so we just started together with with cgr with a idea 
um, telling CGR our tolerances, our requirements, our customer requirements. And the main requirement here was, as I already mentioned several times, full integration of the ECU. And um, therefore, we had to find a process how to connect the PCP uh, into a housing where it's not possible to use a standard wave soldering process. And also, it needs to be considered that we have high temperatures uh, in the car, so we also have we need to have a resistant uh, connection between PCP and uh, the pins. And what was the solution to, to this problem? So this challenge, not the problem, the challenge. Yeah, <laughs> uh, um, we we started or we designed uh, the housing to use overmolded ELO pins. So therefore, we have a direct mounting situation that is possible for us. Um, it's quite cost optimizing because you only have to push the PCP on the on the ELO pins and it's done. So there is no soldering line needed. And for advantage is that we are here using a thermoplastic housing, which is not exposed to high temperatures, which can occur during the soldering process. And it wouldn't be even possible to reach uh, the connecting areas here. So for our application, we have here uh, the best connecting possibility because it's temperature resistant. We have tight pitches that are possible. So it means that the gaps between the pins can be really, really tight, which is important to produce uh, a small ECU like that one. Uh, thank you, Lucas. And could you explain a little bit more in detail how you resolved some other specific challenges of the, of the project? Well, maybe we have in our auditorium some people that have a broad knowledge of plastic technologies. So they for sure know that there are two things that are limitating or some limitating factors in the plastic technology. One are round shapes and the second one are thin walls. And we combined both here. So just to give CGR um, extra work to make it more complicated. And what we can see here is um, a mold flow analysis between second out of tool and third out of tool. So in the grayish area on the left, that small grayish area, um, it wasn't fully molded. So we had to find way together with several um, simulations, mold flow simulations and design changes uh, to get the fully molded part. But design changes are quite tough due to the strict limitations and um, tolerances on that part. So you cannot change from, we had here requirement to have a wall thickness of 0.7 millimeters. And uh, you cannot add a further millimeter just to ensure that the part is molded, fully molded. So we had to add material at some places and take away somewhere else. So it was quite uh, intense work to do uh, to implement several ideas and changes, and, but still fulfill the customer requirements to have a fully round shaped housing as it needs to be uh, tight connected to customer um, um, customers part. So uh, yeah, but at the end, uh, we find in co-engineering process uh, a solution uh, to get over that problem. And the third problem was, as we came over the first or the second uh, challenge, uh, we directly found our third challenge, which was uh, taking a closer look at the uh, assembly process. Uh, we get the housing from, from CGR, and then we assemble or press in our PCP. And after the press in process, we normally um, have to protect our uh, electronic components from the harsh environment. And therefore, we use a special potting process where resin is injected into the housing and then hardened by an oven. And during this hardening process, um, thermal uh, stress or uh, the high temperature leads to uh, mechanical stress in the housing and the resin. And so we had the challenge that at the beginning without any electronic component in and without any potting material is totally round shape. And after putting the part, uh, we had egg shaped housings. Therefore, we had to go back to our simulations and find a way to, let's say, pre-stress the housing. So we designed, um, defined egg shaped housing to 
have a completely round shaped housing at the end of the production. Um, as well here, we co-engineered together with CGR how the housing needs to be designed to have that pre-stressed housing or egg-shaped housing and how it can be defined to have afterwards, after our production process, uh, fully round-shaped housing with, uh, which um, needs uh, reaches all the requirements uh, of the customer. Thank you, Lucas. And what are the uh, what were the the results for your for your product engineered with CGR? Can you talk to us about this? I mean, uh, we started in Q1 2020, and we all know how hard that year was, especially for the automotive industry. So, but already from year to date, uh, to date we have 256 thousand parts uh, produced and uh, sold or given to our customer um, since the beginning of the year. And since then, we had not a single customer complaint uh, in the serial production. Uh, there was no correction needed to be done. And this shows really the stage of the part where we went into serial production. So that was a fully engineered part without any issues or any problems occurring during the first serial time. So that was quite uh, outstanding work that we've done together with CGR, I think. Thank you, Lucas. Uh, thank you for this uh, explanation uh, of uh, the, the case study, uh, which, is, which had, as we saw, great results, obviously. Um, and now we can pass to the question and answer session. Uh, you can uh, you can send all your questions uh, in the chat uh, on your right, uh, and uh, we already have a question from Philip, um, and uh, uh, I think that it's uh, directed to uh, Dr. Reigen, um since it it's concerns uh, CGR. Uh, the question is following, uh, Dr. Reigen: Is the Elopin patent available worldwide in CGR locations? A very good question, um, and uh, I think one of the main advantages of the CGR group is um, that we are um, present worldwide. So um, we are um, happy to say that our uh, elopin is not available in all the CGR plants, but it is available uh, in China, where we already do uh, um, a very similar product. Uh, so in China, we already use elopin, um, and it will also be available in Mexico. Uh, so I think we cover, at least for the automotive customers, uh, um, the uh, most important areas. And uh, the good thing is um, um, you will not only find the ELOPIN uh, in Mexico and China, but you will also find the know-how. So because the strategy of CGR um, is not only to transfer parts, but also to transfer know-how so, so that we can serve our customers um, everywhere in the world, uh, or at least at the most important spots. But uh, in case you come from an area where we don't have a plant, the uh, elopin is relatively small and can uh, transport it everywhere with a low uh, freight charge. Uh, thank you, Philip. Uh, and another question uh, from, uh, from, from Mark. Have you experience uh, with um, elopins in other industrial domains? We have talked a lot about the autom automotive industry, but uh, do you have this experience in other domains? Yes, of course. I mean, at the end, uh, um, also, I'm still enthusiastic about the Elopin. It's it's only a connector connector for a PCB, and of course, PCBs are not only found in cars or vehicles. Uh, they are also found in electric uh, electronic appliances and in industrial use, even in uh, 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 consumer goods. Uh, so uh, we also have uh, our parts used in several uh, uh, several applications which are non-automotive. Um, as always, the automotive standards are very high and we see, uh, at least from my experience, that they cover all other industrial uh, um, applications uh, or demands. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other questions? I see that there are many people typing right now. So let's let's wait. Um, a couple of seconds to get their questions. Uh, a question from uh, Maxim. Um, 
Yes. Uh, also to for uh, for Philip, uh, could you clarify what you meant by saying that Elupin is six times more reliable, reliable than soldering? Uh, thank you for that uh, question. Um, uh, I, I uh, see that um, the, the audience is very uh, precise when I say something, but it's, re it's really the case. There were tests made, um, especially with uh, thermal uh, changes, um, um, uh, also vibration. Um, and um, there uh, are statistics that uh, the press fit connection, or in our case, the elopin connections, um, is much more reliable uh, than the soldering. Um, of course, if you're interested, you can send me a, a, an email uh, or contact uh, the CGR and we can send you more details. Um, it's not to say that uh, soldering is not working. It's not at all the point. Um, it's uh, just, uh, um, um, let's say, tests were made. And this is mainly connected to the, uh, to the fact that we have a flexible connection um, also um, eagleizing uh, um, uh, dimensional uh, changes or dimensional uh, problems uh, which we usually have with tolerances of the PCB hole. Uh, thank you. Uh, do we have uh, any other questions? Yes, another question. Uh, which is the typical project duration of a co-engineering project? Again, there is no stereotypical answer, but um, uh, since um, our, um, let's say, uh, efforts are always um, uh, linked to our customer needs, we usually have a time frame, especially in the automotive industry, which is um, the, the time frame of the OEMs at the end using the parts. Um, uh, so um, it, we could say the borders or the limits are always uh, the, the necessities of having uh, a start of production or first of tool samples, uh, but we can say that a, um, a typical project can uh, start, a co-engineering process can go from uh, three months to, to even one year. It depends also on the lessons learned from the prototypes, if we have major changes on the geometries, uh, also in how much knowledge the customer has, um, uh, so do we have to design um, to manufacture, or do we just have to talk about the elopin? Um, but I would say the typical range is between three months and one year. Thank you, Philip. And uh, prob probably uh, our two last questions. Um, so the question from um, from Deepak, which is the what is the maximum thickness of elopin? Uh, which is possible. Uh, could you give more information for current carrying capacity? Uh, for example, temperature curve. Um, so, um, very, uh, very interesting questions. So, uh, regarding the thickness um, of the yellow pin, uh, we, at the moment the, thick, the thickest yellow pin we produce is a 1.2. Uh, millimeter uh, um, elopin, so uh, use, uh, used more and more. It's a relatively new elopin uh, for 48 uh, uh, 48 volt um, uh, uh, technologies, um, and um, so the range from the elopin at the moment is from uh, 0.4 millimeters to 1.2 uh, millimeters of uh, of thickness. Um, I think this was the first question, um, and the second. Um, um, uh, we can, uh, of course, give you detailed uh, information uh, for the carrying, uh, current carrying capacity. Um, we can send you tables, and that's the same for the uh, temperature curve. Uh, so um, if any uh, uh, more detailed information, which are maybe a bit boring for part of the audience are needed, uh, please contact us, and we, we can provide um, all this information uh, very quickly in a, a nice presentation which we could uh, you. give you, or also personally, uh, via phone, uh, web conference, uh, or mail. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Philip. And the last question, uh, very, the very quick uh, answer as we round in off the time. Uh, how is the ownership accountability defined for the co-engineered components? Um, if I understand it, uh, uh, if if I understand it right, it's a bit a question of uh, uh, there are two. Uh, that's I would say there are two uh, aspects. The first one is um, uh, who, if we invent something new, who who will own that? It's very clear. It's our customer. 
um, uh, uh, so regarding patents um, uh, besides the yellow pin because this is another patents uh, but it will be our customer because we work for our customer and the reliability um, so we are not a research and development uh, uh, factory we uh, we do co-engineering with mean which means we help our customer um, to do uh, the most uh, efficient and most reliable part um, possible with our technology so but at the moment it's usually like this because it's also the intellectual property going over to our customer they will normally put uh, the results of our co-engineering in their drawings uh, so it will be also a, a, pr a property and responsibility of uh, the customers. But uh, that's the actual point. Uh -huh. Thank you, Philip. Uh, I would like to thank uh, our speakers, uh, Dr. Reigen and Mika, uh, Mr. Storm, for uh, for explaining uh, for explaining this technology, its advantages, uh, and uh, how it can be implemented in an efficient way. And thank you all the attendees for uh, for taking this time uh, and uh, join this join the webinar, uh, which we which will also be available in replay. You will receive uh, an email shortly with a link. Uh, and uh, if you wish, you can uh, watch this webinar uh, once again. Um, and obviously, for, or for any other further qu query inquiries uh, about Alupin, you can contact uh, Dr. Eigen uh, and you can see his uh, email just on the presentation on the left. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Uh, and thank you once again for attending. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.